ain't livid, your pictures ain't vivid. Woo! If you talk about this weird ass fitted, need I remind you, your birth certificate ain't worth the ticking of this not so worth this piece of shit. Oh. I love you, my Christmas gift. It's called a Rolex. Don't touch it, you dickless bitch. See how he tried to cut me off, think he's as dope as me? How about you go sit down and listen to Flow a Tree? Do something, nigga. Grow a tree. Grow a disease. Then grow to be someone you would hope to be. I'm teaching you how to rap, and you teaching me how to not react when a coward cat sits down on some cocky crap. And I ain't even like the bogey on my stocking cap. I honestly suggest you just stop with rap. <laughs> So you can apply back. <laughs> 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 my nigga, my nigga CH is back right now. Wow. What? This is how it goes it? Is there crickets the around us? What's up? Uh oh. Right. Shot while I'm getting a haircut. Oh, little rock. Homeless. <laughs> 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 Social worker. <laughs> I got the spirit in me. It's like, hello, Biggie. Look at this nigga's hat. Hello, Kitty. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> I told you I was done with battling, but here he goes again, trying to rebeat Charles Hamilton. Damn again. You need to start janitoring. <laughs>
kind of made sense of everything from 2008 until a couple months ago. Um, everything has just been... Uh, I don't know. Uh, some people have high expectations of me and then didn't realize why I even stepped into the business. Um, some people are upset at me because they feel I didn't bring them along. Some people are upset at me because I didn't go along with their game plan. Um, I'm trying to make sense of why things are the way they are, both in the business and when it comes to perception of me, especially since I gave people what they should perceive. I was in a mental hospital. Um, there's a there's one side of it. one side of it is a lot of people were concerned about blog injuries. The other side of it, um, I, it, it's killing me to not to not get in the specifics and, and then not be a beat behind it. You know what I mean? Like I really want to hold on to it because the real reason is very very cold. But you are very low, more low quality than Luke Wu-Tang's. Low quality. It's like you make it low quality. When I mean like not the raps, it's like far as the music, and I guess I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I understand. You being technical? You asking me to be technical? Charles Eddie Lee Hamilton Jr. Born November tenth, nineteen eighty-seven. What's the goal in life? If you ask a thousand people that question and ensure their identity won't be revealed, you'll get a percentage where the majority would say to make it to a point where you're financially successful, achieve all the goals you set for yourself, and maybe even become famous or at least well known for what it is you brought to the world. We all strive to feel special. Many want the masses to see and remember them. But the truthful reality of life is that we all weren't meant to stand out and be recognized as special. We all are, but we all aren't going to make that impact. In entertainment, this reigns even more true because unlike any other avenue, the people decide who you will become and who you won't. What gives them that power is the ability to be anonymous. While living their own lives, they can determine what happens to yours. Why? Well, that's the power you give up as a creator of anything. You can't decide for yourself what entertains someone else, just like they can't decide the moves you make that causes you to fall out of favor and them not to like you. Even more unfortunate, you won't even really understand that it's happening to you personally until you look up 10 years later and you're still in the same neighborhood you were expected to get out, still create in the same environment you did, same venues you showcased your art, same people you saw along the way up that give you a totally different smile now that don't make you feel special like it once did. This is the musical reality of Charles Hamilton. In 2009, he was primed to be the next biggest thing from New York City. The rap game was blowing up once again with its original sound with new artists like Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and a few more entering the game that represented for the people that cared about bars and freestyles and that old school on the corner rapping to make it out style. While those guys led the charge, New York City was too looking for its young hip-hop representative that wasn't on that hardcore 50 Cent Ja Rule DMX tip, but more suited for the era where rappers began to embrace their underdog side and weren't afraid to convey their emotions on tracks. The Kanye West, the Kid Cudi's, Lupe Fiasco, Wale, and the Drakes of the world were the new frontier of hip-hop that gave you that feel that you too could be a rap star without the shiny jewels, bandanas, and tight faces screaming into the camera. You could just be yourself. New York City had their choice, and his name was Charles Hamilton. In that class of new rappers, he was supposed to have been right in the mix and possibly have the career Kendrick Lamar did. What separated him negatively from Kendrick? What caused him to fall short of those expectations? 
Well, here are three reasons Charles Hamilton's growth was stunted. Salute to DJ Al Seed on IG for this request. Appreciate the inspiration, man. It's your boy JC, stunted growth. Let's get it. Stunt number one, two underground. Charles Hamilton is a Cleveland-born, Harlem-raised rapper that unlike most popular artists was actually a musician in the truest sense, even to a fault. He came up experimenting with all genres of music and even producing or playing most of the instruments you hear in his content. Sonic the Hedgehog, an alias he embraced, Sonic meaning music, and the hedgehog that buries itself underground and enjoys not being in the sunshine often. Do you already see the problem here? Rap, hip hop, the music industry, and making it in such a business isn't too kind to whatever they can sell and hold up in the limelight as a product they can advertise. You have artists that understand that concept and use their underground image to garner the emotional attention and connection they need from the masses of fans, then hit a switch to introduce their ability to also make popular music. It's this time-sensitive ability that determines whether you make it in hip-hop or not for those with those attributes. Charles Hamilton, the musician, and maybe even the person, didn't have that switch. And switch is an interesting word, because it's why fans of his music love him. Because he didn't, but also why the reason their support for him was unsustainable. There's a reason it's called popular music. Those supporters of Charles Hamilton aren't usually the popular in society, so lose out to the majority that could lend support and promote their artists, making them, for lack of a better term, blow up. What does it even mean to blow up? It simply means more support is lent to you and more people want to stand next to the group that's holding you up towards the sunlight. In typical Sonic the Hedgehog fashion, Hamilton's ascendance in music had a fast, spiraling start, but true to its name, couldn't find his way above ground in time to be held up and supported and eventually, like Sega Genesis, lost its interest and appeal. Musically, he was making thought-provoking music and did have much to say that if really listened to could actually help a lot of people. But that's just not what popular music is and probably never will be. The popular want to celebrate unrealistic scenarios they can live through in music where they told a 4-5 or shoot on sight or be this past drug dealer that made it big and changed his life or a young kid that found an interesting way to market himself and when he got on showed you all the shiny things you can't buy. They want to hear the lyrics about who you killed and how many years you spent behind bars because like the movies they watch, they can live through that person without having to change the course of their life to do so. If you happen to slip up again and return back to those places, well, they can just find another artist and attach themselves to them while using your missteps as a daily reminder to stay away from the chorus that makes them different and free to be who they really are. A fan of shoot 'em up music really wants to do that, but he can't because he's afraid of what society would do to him and how that can alter his life, jail, bodily harm, or even death. If a fan can get that from you while surviving in a world of walking the white line, that's perfect. Most fans don't want to be the underground artist or person that never made it to the big stage. They don't want to see you in the same dirty apartment studio years after and have no shiny jewels to motivate them. Charles Hamilton was that. He was too underground too accessible, too relatable, too close to the skin most humans aspire to shed and one day shine. Not popular. Stunt number two, clowned. The first thing, of course, was being punched by a girl while you guys were kind of battling each other. Another way the aspiring popular want to be recognized is having no blemish on their record that one day they could be clowned for, their egos hurt, and lose their position as, well, being popular. 
especially in front of millions. So when certain things began to happen to Charles Hamilton, the masses, even his own supporters that didn't want to bear the brunt of jokes in their own circles, clowned him for allowing such embarrassment. The first was him being punched on camera by a girl. This event was such a small one in the world of Charles Hamilton and the lady in the video, Brianna Latrice, that they even made up afterward and continued on moments later to a venue she was supposed to perform at. But that small piece of history was the beginning of what stained Hamilton's popularity and it seemed everything went downhill from there. The popular rappers weren't supposed to be on camera at the time being assaulted. On top of that, it was by a female. Even more, it seemed she had a very valid reason. What I acquired from the video was that she was already angry with him because in being a friend to him and possible lover, picked him up from the airport and for whatever reason, he made her late to a scheduled event. While being stopped on the street for an interview, she was asked to freestyle, a battle of sorts. She had an already prepared verse venting her frustrations with Hamilton's lack of care for their personal entanglements and spit it for him like she'd been preparing for months. With his turn to respond, he made it a little more personal and spilled beans that would warrant five fingers to the face. Apparently, the two had sexual relations that went too far, which obviously made her emotional about it, and I get that. Those bars led to her testing Hamilton's jaw, and she may or may not have had to abort the seeds of those relations, and the music industry bolting from any alliance to his either being embarrassed on camera or him being such a careless guy that he'd treat a woman like that and actually rap about it to her face. Either way, no matter what you feel, that killed Hamilton's career. That was a big yeah. thing. And that, to me, that was sort of the beginning of where it really started to go fully left. Or at least was a huge reason his career began to die. Then there's the oversaturated references to Sonic the Hedgehog that critics got tired of. The one trick pony appearance with the headphones around his neck. I mean, even in interviews that require and already have headphones, Hamilton refused to relinquish his. He just wear them both. He always wore pink clothing and made references to the color pink, which was not like Cameron wearing pink. Charles was actually what some would call a square doing it, and it allowed another avenue for him to be attacked and clowned. There's the beef with label mate Soulja Boy, the drug rehab, the homelessness, and of course the barbershop battle with Sirius Jones. You name it and Charles had it as a target you could attack him at. Being still in an era where rappers were cool and charismatic and looked up to, he just had too many reasons not to look up to him and see him as a clown instead. And that's what the popular did. His not so popular supporters all clammed up and went away as they had no voice to stand on and no defense for Charles. Stunt number three, missed his window. Which brings me to the final point about why Charles Hamilton didn't blow up like he was expected to. Because of everything that he was and that happened, like his music being too unrelatable or exciting to the masses, him being clowned for being embarrassed in more than one way, and the hiatus from music because of a drug rehab and not trusting fans anymore, he missed all the important windows of time a young artist need to jump through in order to make it to the other side. As he got older, as did his fans, he stayed the same while they moved on and found their own success or responsibility kicked in and diverted their attention to other things. New fans isn't the answer because the newer generation definitely don't want to be associated with even liking the music that isn't all over social media and considered popular, especially if that music isn't special. All in all, was Charles Hamilton's music special? For me, the sound of it was not. But the message of being true to yourself and not being afraid to let people see that is outstanding. It's just not popular, and for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Is or was he an amazing artist? Well, of course. 
but in the frame of trying to use your music to become popular, art at times takes a back seat to the image you put forth. Unfortunately for Charles, his image couldn't be more, well, unpopular. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, and I'm out.